Hello parents, this is Ian Lay speaking. I have with me our two deputies, Garth Lum and Robin Heaton. And although not with us in person, Richard Jardine, the chairman of our governing body, has indicated to us that the message going out in this video and later on in the form of a letter on our D6 is fully endorsed by our governing body. After more than eight weeks of lockdown and having, having recently heard that school for grade sevens at least will be opening on Monday the 1st of June, we thought that we must, must touch base with you to address some of your queries and concerns. Firstly, we apologize for the break in communication, but we have been waiting for direction from the Department of Education. Health and safety. Parents, your children's health and safety is of paramount importance to us, and we shall do everything in our power to ensure that all standard operating procedures are in place for our returning children. Once we are ready next week, we shall send out communication explaining what our children must do upon arrival at school, including the screening at the gate by our staff members and the procedure to enter and exit the classroom. Our cleaning company will be cleaning our school during next week before our grade sevens return. PPEs will be delivered to our school by the department on Monday afternoon. And once these have arrived, our COVID-19 task team, chaired by myself and comprising our school management team and Dr. Joe Batting, a medical doctor representing our SGB, will determine what other items we feel we need to purchase. Every child should be receiving two cloth face masks, but you may have acquired masks for your child already. Hair and uniform. Although children will return to school wearing the winter uniform, we realise that families may have had to prioritise items other than school uniform. So please don't worry if your child does not have a blazer, for example. If it is cold, a school jersey may be worn. While your sons may be waiting for haircuts, the boys must please manage their hair so that it is not a distraction at school. The girls will continue to wear their hair according to our school's hair policy return to school or not. We are sure that while there are some parents who are very keen to have their children return to school, there will be others who, for various medical reasons, are quite nervous. We realise that we have a few children with comorbidities and other family members at risk. For children who have to remain at home, we will provide academic support, but please realise that they will need to be more independent and self-directed than their peers on the campus. Our job is not to judge anyone's situation, but to do our best to support you and your children. Starting with our grade sevens, every parent will be sent a form on which you can comment on your feelings about your child returning. We encourage your child to return to school and be taught in a classroom following all necessary health and safety protocols. If you choose to homeschool your own child, you will need to complete a form with the Department of Education deregister from our school and register with an approved homeschooling provider. Obviously, we would prefer to keep all our families with us. Sport and physical education. Our children love being active and we shall be looking at incorporating some form of exercise in the daily program at school. If included, these activities would also adhere to safety regulations. School shops, tuck shop and aftercare. These will be operational once school reopens but we shall ensure that safety protocols are followed. School fees. Our school has 145 staff members to cater for everything that we offer. But of those, only 31 teachers and one admin clerk are paid for by the state. All the other running costs for the campus and all the other staff members are paid by our parents through SGB appointments. Our fundraising activities that contribute to operating costs have fallen away. Thank you very much to those who have and will continue to pay your fees. We understand that the livelihoods of many of our parents have come to an end through the lockdown and this may continue even as the levels are unlocked. We empathise and it is important for the school finances that every parent who has fallen behind in their fees Contact Michelle Bartosch on email mbartosch at hpps.co.za 
or phone the school to make an appointment to see her, to make a payment plan to settle by the end of the year, or follow the statutory exemption process. Our school needs to hear from our parents for financial planning to the end of the year. Our SGB would like to maintain all the current offerings that our school has to offer, but we rely on the payment of fees for this. Use of staff members. The health and safety regulations will mean that the job specifications of some staff members will have to change. Our task team will be discussing how we must go about training staff members who may be underutilized in their departments to assist with other roles such as screening and recording and monitoring classes that may need to be split because of social distancing requirements. Care Fund. Folk, I've been absolutely blown away by some folk in the Hudson Park family who have approached us to indicate that they have been receiving a salary and they would like to help those families in our community who are struggling to cover the basics. In due course, we shall start a Hudson Park Primary School Care Fund where contributions will be used to assist those in our community who are in need. This, of course, will be handled confidentially. Further information regarding safety protocols and procedures will be sent to you prior to the reopening of schools for our Grade 7s. Keep well and keep safe and we look forward to seeing you on campus soon.